friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a cataract with grade 4 nucleus sclerosis pseudo exfoliation mid dilated pupil and weak jonule let us observe this surgery 2.8 mm main incision has been made this is a side port on the right side of the main incision about 3 clock hours away and now an air bubble has been injected into the anterior chamber. My aim is to stain the anterior capsule with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. The dye stains the capsule immediately if you use an air bubble. Little bit of adrenaline has been used and now the dye is nicely washed out. And now, 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is filled up with this visco. And now, one more side port is made on the left side of the main incision, about two and a half clock hours away. And now, capsulorexis is to be done. I use a 26 case bent needle cystitum to incise the capsule and raise a capsular tag. Now I use a uterator forceps, hold this capsular tag and in this case I am going almost along the border of the pupillary margin to get an adequate size trexis. The cataract is quite hard about grade 4 nuclear sclerosis. So I need a large rexis and the size of the rexis is quite adequate. And now hydro dissection is to be done. BSS is passed just under the anterior capsular rim and we could see that the fluid wave went towards the opposite equator. Some more fluid is injected under the anticapsular rim at 7 o'clock the nucleus is depressed and now an attempt is made to rotate the nucleus but the nucleus didn't rotate probably because of weak jonule and maybe there are some firm capsulocortical additions in several places. Visco is injected and now I proceed with the FECO handpiece. Bevel is down towards the lens mass. Some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. And then with the help of the left hand, the handpiece is turned the bevel is up now towards the corneal endothelium and here is how I divide the nucleus. The tip is buried just in front of the main incision. It goes through the substance of the nucleus like a submarine. A crack happens along the track and the chopper is used along that crack to divide the nucleus into pieces. This is another crack And then the inferior piece is held and along the first crack the nucleus is divided into two pieces and there is a very hard endonucleus. It has been emulsified and removed. Now this big nuclear piece is again subdivided into smaller pieces and I try to get a piece to emulsify so that I get some room to maneuver the other pieces. Now you can see that the cataract is very sticky and quite hard. Fico power 
used in this case is 70 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury bottle height is almost 100 centimeter and now this is a piece I tried to hold but this was probably a wrong way because I, we should always remove the piece in front but in this case probably I wanted to, to keep the piece at seven, si 6 o'clock uh, however I could not do that and now I'm emulsifying the piece which was at 6 o'clock yes it is done now here I see which you cannot see uh, in this two-dimensional video is that the posterior capsule is trampolining means the posterior capsule is flapping and it tends to come anteriorly so I have already decided not to emulsify the last small bit of nucleus to prevent catching the posterior capsule with the FACO tip. This is the last fragment. I am emulsifying it and after some time when a small bit of nucleus will be there I will stop emulsifying and come out let us see when I come out the last piece emulsification is in progress I am at this time I am thinking what to do should I emulsify the whole thing or should I leave it now and here I come out and this was a wise decision in this case because the posterior capsule was flapping coming anteriorly and if I emulsify this small piece of nucleus or epinucleus there's a high chance of catching the posterior capsule and now in this case before implanting the intraocular lens I'm removing cortex because the pupil is not fully dilated if I implant the intraocular lens first and then try to remove the cortex it will be difficult but in this case what is happening is this nuclear piece this small nuclear piece is frequently coming to the aspirating port and it is blocking the aspirating port so what I am doing is frequently I am regurgitating so that the piece doesn't come to the aspirating port and in this way I could emulsify I could remove the cortex very nicely and now 2% ASPMC is injected the capsular bag and the anterior chamber is filled up and now the lens is implanted in the capsular bag yes the lens has gone into the capsular bag some more visco and now I go again into the anterior chamber with the FACO handpiece and I remove this nucleo epinuclear complex 
and it comes out very easily and at this time I have no fear of catching the posterior capsule so if you want to be 100% sure of not catching the posterior capsule emulsify the last small bit of nucleus after implanting the intraocular lens and now visco is nicely removed by bimanual irrigation aspiration in this case during emulsification of the last small bit of nucleus most of the visco came out so I don't have to spend a lot of time with the bimanual and now I inject an air bubble and close the side boards by corneal stromal hydration corneal stroma on either side of these stab wounds are hydrated and these stab wounds close and after this we have to form the anterior chamber very nicely at this time I take a 23G Simco remove the visco from the corneal endothelium place the Simco at the main wound in this way and come out the anterior chamber is nicely formed thank you very very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.